Good news. Found a petrol station that has fuel. We can indeed do the blown gasket sessions. Yeah. Fucking idiots these days. So let's talk about it then. The shambles that is the UK's petrol crisis! <laughs> there is no petrol crisis. What there is, is a shortage of HGV drivers. There is much fuel to go around, but just not enough drivers to get them to the petrol stations in enough time like normal. Ordinarily, that would be fine. There would not be anything... You know, people would probably not realise or even notice that this is happening. However, the media in the United Kingdom has decided that it wants to whip the country into a frenzy. And yes, as per usual, idiots come out in their droves and go, Oh my God, they've reported that there's a fuel crisis. Quick, get in the car. We have to get down to the nearest petrol station and buy petrol. How much have we got? Three quarters of a tag. That's not enough. People are fucking idiots. Absolutely fucking idiots. Now, here's the thing, right? I don't know what newspaper it was that reported this or if it was on television. I don't know and I don't care. Why? Because I have a very strict policy in my life. And that policy is, I don't read newspapers, I don't really check online media all that much, I don't watch the news because I find it, frankly, depressing as fuck. These are my rules. Problem with that is, when you keep yourself out of the loop like that, you tend to go, why is this happening? You know, right, if it wasn't for the fact that I'd seen it shared on Facebook, I wouldn't have known, and I would have went to go and get petrol this weekend and been like an absolute clown, not having a clue and going, why is this petrol station shut? Why is the next one shut? Why is the one after that shut? Because that petrol station that I filled up at was the fifth one I went to this morning to get petrol because Scarlett had, what, just under a quarter of a tank left now before anyone dares go, oh, why are you getting fuel for a car that doesn't need it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, here's the thing, and this is the problem that I have with this whole escapade, right? Personally, I will fill up the car once it gets below half. I am one of those people that once it gets below half, I think, oh my God, I'm going to run out, better brim the tank. I've always done that, especially with Scarlet, because Scarlet, well, when that fuel needle gets to the point where it's just a of the last bit where you're supposed to only have like 50 miles left in this car that could mean anything so i've always just thought no play it safe fill up the tank don't get me wrong it's got to the point where it's went right down into the bottom bit towards the empty on the gauge and i thought no nah. thankfully i was only a few minutes from a petrol station so i filled up and we didn't need to find out exactly where the needle stops and the car goes oh i've got nothing left to drink the end but, you know, anyway. So, basically, I'm not panic buying. I went out to buy fuel that I needed for my car to be able to drive it. Because I had already topped up a few weeks ago. And, well, that's it. I'm now down to, you know, I'm running on empty nearly. So, I need to fill up again. But you've got these idiots that are going out over the course of the last few days that don't need petrol in fact you know what the worst thing is some of the pictures that you've seen circulated online are of people going to filling stations with massive tanks in the boot of their car and filling them up what is fucking wrong with you i'll tell you what's wrong with you you're a c i think i'll bleep that one I, I, I'm sorry, it's a new game to play. If you see rows and rows and rows of people lining up at petrol stations, and good luck because a lot of them are now running out of petrol, but if you start to see people queuing up like that, play the new game that I've just invented. Cut. 
So yes, welcome to the official start of the Blown Gasket Sessions. <laughs> Housekeeping from the last month of September. So, obviously, there's been a few videos that have went up um, this month, specifically surrounding the exhaust more than anything else. That is sensational. I Genuinely, I, I, I love it. Don't get me wrong. If you drive Scarlet for long enough, and if you are kind of keeping a locked in a specific gear to get higher up the rev range because it sounds amazing, you are going to end up with a headache, which I currently have because since I left that petrol station, I've been driving for an hour to find somewhere to film today. So, so I'm kind of thinking, please just stop and just enough. So yeah, I think after that an hour or so, granted if you're hammering it, yeah. The cobalt exhaust is crazy loud, but I love it. And thanks to everyone who commented on the two videos I put up about it. Um, it does sound really good. <laughs> Genuinely, it sounds amazing. It actually sounds better in person than what it does on the videos that I recorded because I didn't really get the mic positioning spot on. I might do another one at a later date because people say these exhausts obviously bed in. So the exhaust note might change slightly. So at some point down the line, I might actually do that. Um, we'll do another one, maybe towards the end of the year. Um, touch wood, as long as everything stays fine. Sorry, bit of a jump cut there, unfortunately. Uh, I went to start doing the Q&A section there and the battery ran out of the camera. And this is the second day on the trot that I've actually tried to film this video. Because yesterday I left the house with one battery and it failed after 10 minutes. So I was sitting talking to myself for about another five minutes or so before I realized that the camera had gone dead. And oh, I'm a tit. Now then, on to today's Q&A, finally. Fucking get there in the end. First question up is a nice, easy one, actually. Um, comes from John Hamilton. What's the tune in the new intro bit? Looks proper retro, mate. Love it. Um, thanks for that, John. The track, I've actually, I replied to it anyway, but I'll say it again because there's been a couple of times I've been asked what it is. It is in the description for all the videos now. I've put it in there. It's, I, I don't know if how to pronounce his name correctly. I hope I'm not going to butcher this, but it's Don Felder and the track's called Heavy Metal. <laughs> it's from like, a really obscure film in the early 80s, and it's just a great sounding track. And it seems to be copyright free on YouTube, which is the biggest plus of all, to be honest. As long as it's that, then I'm quite happy. Uh, next question up <laughs> from Terminal Connection. Uh, who's a new subscriber over the last month? Hello, thank you for joining us. Um, I've just found your channel when googling the E10 issues. Hilarious stuff, pal. But can I use E10 in my NB? Oh, I've got to be honest. You'll be lucky if you can even get E10 at the minute. <laughs> if anything, those of us that use premium uh, are probably okay just now, but you might be at a disadvantage if you're wanting to be a cheapskate and use E10. Um, yeah, as far as I'm aware, you can probably use E10 in the NB MX5 or Miata, whatever you want to call it. Um, the only thing about that is there's still a lot of people going on about that. With the E10, you think, oh, Jesus, I don't understand why people are still having arguments about it or getting worried about it. If you are worried about it, don't use it. Buy the premium stuff, which will work fine with your car's fuel lines and whatnot. I don't get why people are still worrying over it. You think, well, well, well use it or don't use it. Just make your mind up and go on with it, because clearly there's a list on the government website that tells you what cars can use it and what cars can't use it. Realistically, at the end of the day, that's what you should be using. So, yeah, um, I would say in the NB, probably, because as far as I'm aware, there's people using it in NAs as well, and you just think, ugh, really? What's wrong with you? Treat these cars right, give them the premium stuff. But we're not gonna go down that whole band again of going through the E10 stuff. Uh, just want to give a quick shout out, it's not a question, but to the Gothic G-Man who said he loves the new intro. Hello George, hope you're well. Uh, I know that obviously uh, 
<laughs> you, you've lost your computer due to goodness knows what you've been doing with that. No doubt downloading lots of illegal software. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, hope you're well. Uh, moving on, uh, this one is nothing to do with cars. This is from Tommy Boy, and it says, Still, as always, my man, question for next month. Why do you not do lives on YouTube? Now, I've actually been asked this before. Uh, I can't remember who asked it. It was in a video a couple of months ago, um, and I wrote a very lengthy reply to it. Short answer is, as much as I can talk for Scotland, doing it to the camera here in the middle of nowhere I can't do that at home where we have decent broadband in the house and whatnot because well reasons um I can't sit down to do like a live stream for an hour two hours whatever um so that's like the number one reason why I don't tend to want to do live streams the second reason I don't want to do a live stream really is why <laughs> Why? Well, this is essentially like a live stream, only it's recorded in advance and then edited and put up because it gives me a chance to fuck it up and then put it up anyway afterwards. Just for a slight edit here and there if something really is a little bit too. Oh no, I don't want that going up online. You know, that's that's like the second reason as to why. Um, third reason why. I'm going to have to be completely honest here. The channel's got, what, 500 and something subs? 580-odd subs, something like that. Um, <sighs> there's not enough comments, I think, to have a back and forth. I could be wrong with that. I mean, I could be completely off the boil there. I could be totally wrong. It could be a case of if I went live on YouTube and then, you know, everyone who comments and that appears at the same time and then we can have back and forth. Great, fantastic. But, you know, I'm just, I'm a bit worried about going live on YouTube and then sitting there with, you know, no one. <laughs> That's my biggest fear. <laughs> it's that thing I'm going, I mean, if I went live, I don't really have a lot to talk about at the time because it's just like going live for going live's sake. Eh, I'm not going to do it. Maybe, I mean, maybe one day if the channel gets to like the 1000 mark, which could happen in like 2030 or something like that, maybe then. <laughs> maybe then, but right now, nah, I'm I just, I'm not really, I don't see the point in doing it. I don't think it adds anything to the channel right now. I mean, still at a point where, you know, this is fun at the end of the day and that's I always want it to be fun I don't want it to be a Ugh, let's just do this you know it's, I don't want it to turn into that um, so maybe one day if it's like a special occasion or something fine I might go live but you know I, it's, I just don't really see the the need to do it right now unless anyone has any ideas put it in the comments below now sorry I had to do a quick cut there thanks for the question Tommy but the wind is kicking up something rotten around about here now. Sorry, for people that don't live in Scotland, they won't have a clue what I've just said. I'll say that again. <laughs> the wind is blowing a gale here, and it is ridiculously windy there, to the point where it was making it pretty much not worth filming anymore so then moving on the last question that we're going to feature on this month's blown gasket from your mum <laughs> your mother uh, yeah your mum asks <laughs> are you going to turbo scarlet now thanks for the question um it's a good one, that, because, well, at some point in the future, Scarlet is going to get some form of engine modification. Now, the question is, what's it going to be? Will it be a turbo? Will it be a supercharger? Or will it be ITBs? Now, there is advantages and disadvantages to all three options that are available there. There is a fourth option, leave her as she is. We're not going to do that. 
she's not going to stay as she is. She needs a bit more power. You know, she needs to have a bit more of everything, really. Um, as time progresses, it's just the way it works with having a project car. You can obviously just fettle her and leave her as is, but nah. At some point down the line, we are going to do something now. To answer your question, the honest answer right now, I don't know if she's going to get turboed. I don't know. It costs roughly the same to do any of the three options, genuinely speaking. It, it's literally about between two to three thousand pounds to do all three of them. Um, I believe the easiest one to do is the supercharger. The turbocharger is slightly more involved, as is the ITBs, but again, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. Now, we're not going to be doing it anytime soon, unfortunately, as much as I would love to. It's not going to be happening soon. It will be something that is way, way, way down the road. Um, right now, the main thing is focusing on keeping Scarlet running and saving up enough to get the rust repair dealt with hopefully hopefully next year i should be able to get that done because that in itself is going to cost about between two to three thousand pounds to sort and i don't have that money lying around in fact the problem is that um i keep trying to start saving for it and it's like that really miserable scene in up where they have their savings fund and they keep having to smash the jar <laughs> that's what keeps happening every time i think right i've started saving i've started saving I've... at one point i had quite a bit put aside and then bang it's all gone that was a couple of months ago um and then the clutch went and then woof just you know ah Unfortunately, um, it's one of those things where it's right on the back burner, but don't worry, one day we will get round to it. The question right now is, <sighs> which would I do right now if I had the money? Personally, I'm not going to go down the supercharger route. I think that's definitely out. Um, as much as I like the sound it makes, uh, and the fact that you get the power right through the rev range. I like that about that, but I don't think I'm going to go down that road. Turbo. I mean, yes. <laughs> this is the problem, right? It's between the turbo and the ITBs for what we eventually do with Scarlet. Now, I like the idea of having a turbo. I like the fact that it's readily available and I like the fact that it's tried and tested and I like the fact that you can buy the kit and pretty much do it yourself if you want to. I'm not sure whether I will or not. It depends. By the time we come to do that, if I have enough space to work properly uh, on Scarlet, like an indoor space, then yes. If I don't, it'll probably get farmed out for someone else to do it if I choose to go down the turbo route. The only problem I have with that and it is an age-old debate, is I bought this car because of its handling abilities. I bought this car because it's a laugh, and I bought this car because I like the fact that you get to use all of the available power. What little of it there is, I admit, but it's a laugh, and you might be doing 35 miles an hour, but it feels like you're doing 60, and it just sounds like you're, you know, on a racetrack. It's hilarious. I, I, it genuinely, I couldn't be more happy with how she is right now. But the problem I personally believe with going down the turbo route, now this is, a, I'm not 100% convinced in my own argument here, but going down the turbo route, I believe would eliminate some of the fun factor. Now, there might be people watching this that have a turbo and will go, you fucking idiot. Yeah, you're probably right. What I would like to do is have a go in a Turbo DMX-5. I would love to have a go. If someone owns a Turbo DMX-5, get in touch with me either on the YouTube channel or on Instagram, uh, Carbo5, by the way. Um, that's just Carbo5, the number five. Get in touch with me and let me drive your car <laughs> because it might make my mind up. Although then that says that I would need to have a go in an ITB one as well. Which I would like to do also, but... It's just that I drive Scarlet on a lot of country roads. 
it's what she's designed for so of course i'm going to drive her on them once you get her on a motorway or something yeah it's, it's not the most enjoyable experience to be honest you literally just put your foot down and hope that the tours will be over as soon as humanly possible not the first time someone said that to me but hey <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah i suppose when you're turboing it once you get a certain point in the revs, that's when you come on boost and then whomph, off you go. And I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I really don't know this. I, I like the idea of it, but... <sighs> Personally, I'm leaning towards ITBs. I'll just put it out there right now. Right now, if I had the money, what would I do? ITBs. That's probably what I would do because I've already got the back box sorted. I would buy the cobalt manifold for the left hand side of the engine because we'll be moving the air away from the that side uh, or the hot side of the engine and it'll be going on the cool side of the engine which is what I, I what I really want um, to be honest so yeah I know that you don't get massive gains just by putting ITBs on but you do get gains and I'm, I think I read somewhere was it like 160 horsepower 160 170 something like that which I'm fine with, totally fine with that. It's not going to overstress the engine either. Um, but I'd be completely delighted to have about 160 to 180 horse. That would suit me fine. I'd be quite delighted at that. So at the minute, that's what I'm leaning towards and the wind's kicking up off us again. Um, so yeah, thanks for the question. Obviously, if anyone has any opinions, please in the comments below, let me know what you think and well, I'll read them out next month. Um, I'll also reply in due time as well, but you know, I'll read them out still next month as well. Um, so that just about does it for this month's very windy blowing gasket session. Next month, I have no idea what we're going to do or where we're going to be because it's going to be towards the end of October when I film that one. And the weather will be full on Scottish, so unfortunately, even caught my breath there uh, unfortunately when we get to the summertime it's probably going to be more roof up than roof down I'm afraid which is not church it's really not oh and it's Sunday that fits sorry right anyway what's coming up in October well um, I'm going to do some servicing to Scarlet I know not the most exciting videos but you know there's going to be a oil change I hope um, also I'm going to do a fuel filled change because I don't know when that was last done either so we've got those two to do I'm also um, potentially this might or might not happen potentially the rear lights the gaskets that go around them probably the originals on Scarlet. it's time to get them changed i have a new set of them sitting in the house ready to go so hopefully i'll get them fitted as well and that video should be up this month also and there's one other thing which is an absolute pain in the ass because i'm quite annoyed about this uh scarlet's headlights the bv autos that i bought last year well when I was driving Scarlet back from filming the drive around Inverary, which was unbelievably boring, gotta be honest, see, coming back that night, oh god, I could not have got back quick enough. Um, and do you know what the worst bit is? When I ended the video, I said the road should be quiet. If you've watched that, you'll know, but driving back about 20 minutes into the drive back, I got stuck behind a horse box caravan and someone doing 40 now I overtook the 40 club member but I couldn't get by the horse box or the caravan because they had a train of traffic behind them when we caught up to that and you're like fuck, fuck, fuck so it was literally 40 to about 55 miles all the way back to Glasgow for about 50 miles it was painful, my leg was in agony by the time I got home However, on the motorway, I went to indicate that I was leaving the motorway, headlights were on and everything, and then all of a sudden, my passenger side one went off. Now, high beam is still working, 
and the daytime running and the indicator still working it's just the actual main dipped beam that's not working so I tried to dismantle it last weekend thinking this should just be a quick thing clean the contacts put it back together you know, you know it turned into a, as usual a nightmare with Scarlet so we need to make a proper video on that we will do that this month as well because I'm probably going to have to buy another set of headlights for Scarlet again because the fact that everything else is working and the fuses are working it tends to make me believe that the issue is probably that the bulb just blew randomly same bulb it's LEDs so the fact that I don't know what's happened there but everything else seems fine so probably going to have to buy that as well and then we'll make a video out of that so that's all what's probably going to be coming up in October Asterix hopefully <laughs> because as you know things are always subject to change on this channel potentially might do another one or two 360 drives as well if I get the chance and indeed the time um, I know it's not something that a lot of people watch but you know I enjoy making them and there are people who like watching them so I'll continue to make them as long as people watch them um, even if it is only what 40 50 people <laughs> 50 more than I would normally expect to be honest um, but yeah on that note we'll call it a day and if you have sat through this entire video which is probably going to be an extremely lengthy one and for that I apologize if you have sat through the entire thing thanks very much and as always take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Cue the Don Felder. Down, down, down.